Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here. We are joined by the lovely Yogo Steel. Oh, isn't she sweet? We're in lockdown here in Montana because of the COVID-19 situation. So it's only me here at the workshop. Speak. Good girl, speak. Good girl, speak. Good girl, well done. Okie dokie. I hope all of you watching are staying well and staying healthy and your family and your loved ones are staying well. I know there's a whole lot of you watching that are healthcare workers that are on the front lines of what's going on right now, putting your lives on the line. And I just wanna let you know, I appreciate it. The whole team here who's not at the workshop right now, but the whole team of us that helps make these videos, we all appreciate it. We appreciate what you're risking. And we hope that all of you watching are as healthy as can be. And if you're suffering, we hope it is only temporary. We are thinking of you all. Yoga. What? Ah, 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 ah. So you can't have scotch bread pads. Out. No. This is not good for your teeth. You can't have it. This is for polishing things. This is not a toothbrush. It's a great day. I'm thrilled to have you here. Before we jump in, let's thank today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is the Foot Mouse Achilles Pro 5. Introducing a revolution in gaming. Foot Mouse, the first science-based gaming mouse made for feet. I've been using Foot Mouse since 2017, but not on land. There's a lot of controversy. Okay, okay, okay. it's not Foot Mouse but it is Raid Shadow Legends. That's right, the dark fantasy RPG game available on mobile and PC, where you're seamlessly able to play between the two platforms. A game where you can experience conquest and defeat, fight in extraordinary battles, build your own clan, and have an all round good time. It's free to play, let's get stuck in. Okie dokie, here we go. I'm gonna take this guy down here. Take him down with the, oh, no, it's the bow and arrow this time. Ow, oh, they're getting me. There we go, with the ax, we Put them down. This was our champion. Check out those awesome battle axes. Super cool graphics in the game. Oh, look at that. He's even got a knife on his hip there. What's great is now the daily rewards program has been increased from 90 to 180 days, which means that each day you can get your free rewards from energy to silver and a free barbarian legend champion, Skyle of the Drake. A big thank you is owed to Raid for sponsoring this video and help supporting what it is that we do. If you guys go to the link in the description, please download Raid. It's free to play. And if you're a new player, you're going to be getting 100,000 silver, 50 gems, an energy refill, and a free champion, the Adjudicator. Give it a download, give it a play. Thank you so much, Raid. Thank you guys for being here. Let's get back into the video. Alrighty, so here's the check valve that we pulled out of the machine yesterday. This is what it looks like. Clean it up, put it in the ultrasonic, then uh, scotch bride did it a tiny bit and gave it some oil. I just love looking at these old pieces of technology. Think of the engineering that went into this. Some guy, whenever this machine was built, maybe in the 40s, was at a manual lathe, much like the Monarch lathe that we have here, and had to turn this by hand. You had to make this part to a specification off a drawing. You might have had to make a bunch of them for a bunch of different machines. You had to make this part too. And here, after all those years, a young little whippersnapper like myself is able to hold it, have a look at it, and use it in a machine. Like, that's extremely exciting. There's so much history in all of this, and that's just lovely. But anyway, here's how it works. This spring is holding this tight on the valve seat. Let's put this back into the cover plate so you can see better. So here we go, this part. Drop it in there, spring goes over the top, this piece goes on top of the spring, nut goes on top of that. And then that valve piece just comes in from the underneath and screws in like that. But you know what's interesting? We'll have a look at this. There's a big old gap. So the thought that I'd had in the last episode that these dents might have been making this not seal well, those thoughts are wrong. These dents have done nothing to it. They're not affecting the valve area at all because the valve seats on this chamfer instead. You remember also from the last episode, there's a hole here and that hole goes all the way through into that valve area. And my thinking is that if this was pressurized, that would open up the valve and relieve pressure. So 
But Rebin's struggling to actually understand exactly what this check valve does and why it's there. And so what I did is I drew the whole thing up here on the whiteboard, and I've also had incredible hammer mechanics like Mark Krauss and John Nicholson reach out. I've had folks like you leaving comments below and reaching out via email, giving your thoughts too, and all of it is helping build a picture that leads to a whole lot more understanding on my part. I know to a lot of you this would kind of make sense immediately, to me it didn't. I don't think I'm that mechanically gifted, but essentially this ram comes up and what this check valve is doing is it is allowing us to have an air cushion so that the ram doesn't hit the top of the cylinder head cover. Because when the ram is in its upwards trajectory, it's going to come up, it's going to close off the port that goes to the valve, and it's then going to pressurize the air here because the valve won't let stuff back through. But of course, because the ram can end up above the main entry port, you need the check valve to be able to allow the next bit of positive pressure to come in and actually push the ram down while it's covered up here. And so it's all starting to make sense. The check valve is there to give us an air cushion, but mean that that air cushion doesn't keep the ram stuck up there because it can't be pushed back down again. And so with all this in mind, what might be causing the ram to hit the top is that check valve leaking air. And so we want to examine and see whether it leaks. Before we get into that, if you want to learn more about these power hammers and you want to get a, a, a book which is probably about the most information you could possibly get about these power hammers, Mark Krause, who is the top power hammer mechanic in the country, has a book called Operating Principles of the Nasal Self-Contained Power Hammer. You can get that on eBay. I'll be sure to leave a link down below because that book covers a whole host of this stuff and Mark has been extremely generous in giving me some information so that we can help troubleshoot this. And what it is that I can now, at this point, finally picture in my head lines up exactly with what he was telling me to do, which was to check that that valve wasn't leaking. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to flip this assembly upside down. Ta-da! And with that, we can see that the damage that those weld beads did up here have nothing to do with the valve. They don't do anything. They're just dense. It's fine. But we're going to use this cavity here, a little bit of soapy water, fill it up, see if it drops out, see if it stays put. And now we wait, and we see if it drains out or if it stays put. Well, it has definitely leaked. We were all the way up at the top here. Now we're all the way down there. It'll all drain out there as I lift the valve up. But yeah, it's all gone. It took about 20 minutes or so for it all to leak out. So it didn't happen immediately. But definitely leak. I'm unscrewing the nut from the underside of this. And we're gonna have a look at this here. And this is why I'm so happy to have got a better understanding of how this works. Because now that I look at this, I see that that is definitely a problem. It needs to seal on this area here and in this area here. These two tapers, they line up. And so, having a little bit of rusty stuff in there and very crusty stuff in here can't be good. It is not blue diacom, it's marking blue. And so instead of being painted on and scribed through, this is for transferring contact points. We'll get a little dab, a little tiny bit there. And then we'll rub it on over here. Make a mark on here with a sharpie. Do the same here, and we'll drop it in. I don't know the best way to do this, but I'm just gonna move it ever so slightly, put some pressure on it, then we'll pull it up, and we'll know exactly where it's contacting. You see we have contact here, no contact, contact here. In short, there's only about kind of half the circumference of it contacting. And so as per the recommendation of Mark Krauss, what we need to do is we need to lap this check valve. We need to lap it to that seat so it lines up perfectly. In the process of having learned more about this, I've learned that this is actually something that needs to get done on certain engines too. Lots of you folks have commented that this valve looks a whole lot like a lot of check valves you see in engines, and wherever there is a leak there, you have to do a similar thing. You need a valve lapping paste, you need a valve lapping tool to spin the thing inside the valve seat and allow a paste with abrasive media in it to grind the two surfaces together to the point that it makes perfect seal. Same thing that we've got to do. So let's have a look at what this stuff is. Would you look at that? It's available at Ace Hardware, AutoZone, Walmart. So this is common stuff, folks. And that is a great surprise because it means it's easy to get, fast, efficient. It's just a run to town. Oh. 
It's not just a run to town away. We are in the midst of a pandemic, a shelter in place order. So we're not gonna go to town and get this valve grinding compound. Instead, we're gonna find out what's in it and see if we can mimic it. So I typed in what micron is valve grinding compound abrasive. We've got this company here saying eight to 15 microns is what they use. Excellent for completing repairs to damaged valve casings and pistons, I see. So maybe we don't have normal valve grinding compound, but we have diamond paste. Oh, what is this? Half micron. Okay, that might be too fine. Oh, we're getting closer, that's one micron. Three micron. Oh, but what is this? But six micron, there we go. It won't be as aggressive as commercial lapping compound, but maybe it'll do the job with a little extra work. Okie dokie, pull that off. Let's squeeze some onto this, onto the valve itself. There we go. And let's see what we can do. So they make a special tool called a Zim Lapper to lap valves into place. Don't have one of those. I'm gonna hot glue this piece of Delrin plastic onto here, and then we'll just work it with our hands. Holy! Well, that's surprising. Have a look at that! That's a darn sight better indeed. We seem to be doing something right. Well, miraculously, after about another 20 minutes or so, about the same amount of water as I put in is still there. It worked. Frankly, that's mind-blowing. A little bit of diamond lapping paste, a little bit of this, and it holds water. Hit this area with the grinder a little bit to uh, get any of the high spots down. And we're now gonna put it all back together. Let's check to see it doesn't leak again. Make sure in its final assembly it's not leaking. It looks pretty good. It doesn't look like any bubbles are floating up and the level's staying the same. With the top cover dealt with, my next step is going to be cleaning up this rust here so that, that doesn't do any damage to anything. So I'm gonna give it a little scotch bright while protecting everything else. Then we're gonna pull the ram up Grind on that weld a little bit. So we make sure that that surface is real nice and neat. So if it hits the top, it's not weld hitting that, um, but it's, it's hitting it with a lot more contact. Alright, gave it a little grind and it looks way better. The next step is I want to make a new gasket. This did have a gasket, I'm gonna show it to you. This is the original one, at least original for when I got it. And you see it's about a sixteenth of an inch thick or so. And for those of you that don't know what a gasket is, because I used to not know what a gasket is, it essentially means that you get a better seal because it would be extraordinarily difficult to get the steel so flat and perfect that it sealed perfectly. So instead of trying to get the steel perfectly flat, it's able to have a milled finish, and then a gasket, which is some soft material that's oil resistant, is able to conform and squeeze down and get that seal going on. Well, I've been seeing auto parts store cars drive around here, and uh, I didn't know whether it was gonna be the same as it was in the UK, where you could phone in an order and they'd come and drop it off for free. Well, lo and behold, it is. So I called our local auto parts store, and would you have a look at that? We have ourselves an 18 inch wide piece of gasket material. I can't believe it, the thing was like $15. And then in like 25 minutes, it had been delivered for free. That's some pretty crazy stuff was able to stay completely socially isolated, and still we can make some progress. Anyway, let's cut some gasket. Alrighty, we've got it all put back together. It is now moment of truth. Let's see if it at least still turns on and runs. It works! So at least we know we haven't done enough damage to stop it from its most basic of functions. What I'm gonna do next, however, is we need to properly test it, see if we've sorted out the knocking. So we'll light the forge.
Regrettably, I did hit the top. And I gave it a pretty good one when I hit the top. So, we have not completely cured the problem. I do have to say though, it feels good to run the thing. The thing feels really good, aside from that one hit. Maybe we've improved it. Maybe I'm just feeling good. We definitely didn't completely fix it. But forging is quite fun. So we haven't got it all the way perfect yet. It is, however, frankly, overall, a joy to run. I'm loving running this machine. It hits so hard. It's got great control. Hitting the top happened that last time when I really tried to make it happen. There's still more work that I want to do on it. I will note, Mark Krauss, be sure, of course, to check out his book I referenced earlier if you want to learn more about this stuff. Well, he did let me know that this is a bad idea. Don't do this, and I should tell you all. Don't do this. There's plenty more that needs to be rectified on the machine. I also want to adjust the treadle here in a future video because I'm just not finding this comfortable. The distance from the treadle to the dies is way wider on this than on the Anyang power hammer. On here, I'm able to get so much closer to the machine and it's much more comfortable. Whereas here, because we're stuck out an extra four inches than it probably needs to be, I'm four inches further away from the machine when I'm working on it. The dies are lower anyway. It's just kind of causing me to have to bend down a whole lot more. So we're going to do some modifying to this. Now I've also heard that some of you think we should paint it. What do you think? Drop us a comment down below if you think this needs some paint to let us know what color you would paint it. And uh, yeah, if there's enough people letting us know you want paint, we might just go ahead and do that. Big thank you to all of you for watching this video. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy. Thank you so much. Big thank you so to Raid, of course, for sponsoring this video and supporting us making this all possible. See you all very soon on the next one. Bye-bye.